Now, welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let's get right to the news. All right, it's Fan Art Friday, so we have up on the screen for you some new fan art that we received. It's awesome. It's it's it's, it's me and you. Thor. Yeah, that was, when you showed me that, I'm like, that's pretty awesome. Like, who did this? So, so I'm going to be using this probably multiple times because I love it and it's amazing. Thank you. Remember, you can send that to the email, Sailor Naboo. In the description. Yeah, oh, incredible work. Absolutely love it. it. Was we were both just thrilled to see it. So thank you so much. All right, we're talking Andor. Andor. How many days? How many days? Too many. More twenty one more than there was before. It's like Forty seven or something. Yeah. Someone will look it up and tell me in the comments, or I'll look it up and fix it before the video. Yeah, goes you'll out. put you'll put a little disclaimer, a little. Asterisk it's and... too far out for me to even bother counting. Because they point. added the 21 it days. It, it was so been close. so much closer. We were this close this to greatness. Close. But it's okay. I will forgive them because three episodes is better than two. Because it's supposed but to... But not if you have to wait an extra... No. Like, it does, the math no. doesn't work. The math doesn't work. Whatever. They're distancing themselves from Lord of the Rings, which is probably in their best interest. <laughs> for many different reasons. Yes. Ah, uh, just... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see about Lord of the Rings. Right, Told you, Rumpus, try go. to keep an open mind on that thing. Article 1. Diego Luna talks more about Andor. He mentions the length of the first three episodes. <laughs> it's always an adventure around here with the cats. I like that we have, like, cat breaks. We just Sorry. let them do their thing and carry on. Sorry, if there might be cat noises in this one. They are they're, they're <laughs> running around like, like crazies today. Very angry about Andor. Apparently. They, they just found out. It's three more weeks. Diego Luna recently appeared on The View to talk about Andor. And one of the most noteworthy bits of information that the interview comes out with is near the end when Diego Luna talks about those three episodes. Episodes? <laughs> de debuting at once. Mentioning that the runtime of all the. <laughs> Whew, all right. No. I hope you leave this one in. Carry on. Mentioning that the runtime of all three episodes together comprises nearly two hours, he says, Well, the idea was to bring the most we could out at once, you know, and Disney Plus doesn't do that often, you know. So we're going to deliver three episodes on the 21st, which is great, because it's a standalone. It's a series that is its own, you know. We, get, we need a... <laughs> sorry. We need a good chance to introduce all the characters, the planets, the vibe, the tone of the show, and it's going to be great. We're going to be able to watch it. It's like three episodes. It's almost two hours. So roughly 40 minute episodes? Depending on if they're counting the like eight minutes of credits yeah. that they put at the end of each episode. The credits and then the opening couple minutes and then the recap if they sometimes, do it. Yeah. Sometimes they recap. At least episode one doesn't have that. Unless they well, recap no, they Rogue might, One. Why would they? Would no. Be so strange they wouldn't to recap do that. They, that By would the way, this guy's going to die in the end. No, they would never do that. That would be <laughs> Well, I would terrible. never say never. Never right, well, say never. Well, it's not clear how long each episode will be specifically. In light of guesswork, it suggests that each episode would average between 35 and 40 minutes, not much longer than an episode of The Mandalorian. Yeah, that's kind of... I, I was expecting slightly longer. I, I know there's like 12 episodes and that's already you know 50 percent more than the seasons of mandalorian and stuff so but i was still expecting longer episodes i think expecting a little more so many more characters a little more depth and a little more you know never enough for a little more Skywalker. i know i know I'm, <laughs> i gotta complain about everything i know i hear that all the time i hear people complaining about that complain. all the time so the irony but yes but i i do get it i get it i i always have to find the little nitpicky reason to hey why is this this way but that's my stupid All I know brain. is that's going to be a late night into morning. Yeah. yeah. I think that might be one of those we watch and go right to the review and don't sleep. Yippee. Well, you go right to the review. I, I get off You go to sleep. Yeah, I you let me do sleep. my review and then they're like, oh, I'll talk I write about down this with notes you later. during the episode. Yeah. All right. Diego also spoke about his reaction when first asked to reprise the role of Cassie and or roughly four years ago. His attachment to the Star Wars galaxy was so strong that he did not hesitate to accept. He said, I wasn't expecting the call at all, but I was surprised. Yeah, I was happy. I miss this universe a lot. There's not many times you perform as an actor in something that matters so much. It's part of my childhood. I learned to watch movies through this universe, these characters, so this connection is special, like no other job, you know? 
So when I was asked if I'd be willing to explore the idea, I said, yes, of course. But that was like four years ago, a long time ago. It's been a long process. <laughs> it has been a long. I mean, this was the first show announced. This is, mm-hmm. it, it was, it feels like shortly after Rogue One, they're like, oh, we, we hit gold because, I mean, it did extremely well in the theaters. Most fans seem to like Rogue One. Many regard it the best of the Disney movies. So it, it has been a pretty long road to get to this point. It has been. I almost think Rogue One was announced before Disney Plus was even a thing. I can't remember the... Somewhere in the same time period, you know, when we knew Disney was doing a streaming service and this was... I don't remember, but it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the next piece today, because this one's a bit longer. Tony Gilroy reveals time period and or covers. It will make fans see Rogue One in a different light. So, Tony Gilroy and Diego Luna have shared more details about Andor during the press tour for TCA 2022, the Television Critics Association 2022, I guess. Okay. Revealing that Cassian has a shocking backstory, and the show is about regular people in a galaxy far away, which is different from Star Wars series that have come before it. Additionally, two new stills from the show have been released featuring Cassian and Mon Mothma. They'll be shown on here along the way, one after another. One's probably up right now. One of the biggest details was the period of time and or recover. Revealed, you know, Gilroy revealed season one will cover a single year in Cassian's life. Season two will jump between events over the course of four years. Each year of season two will be told in a three-episode arc, each helmed by a different director. As we've previously heard, the series is currently planned to end after the second season. Luna said he was shocked when Gilroy told him about Cassian's history. We learned in Rogue One that Cassian had done some bad things in the name of the Rebellion, but it sounds like we're going to see some pretty nasty stuff. Gilroy says there are little moments of truth about who the characters are in Rogue One. In the pieces they had for Cassian was that he'd been fighting since he was six, and he's done horrible things for the Rebellion. Yeah, that is kind of the the line everybody quotes from him from Rogue One. I've been in this fight since I was six years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I. It's still strange that they taking they're taking this character and expanding him. I, I didn't dislike him in Rogue One. I know a lot of people say the characters in Rogue One all kind of fall flat, and or they like this one and the other ones they don't like. But it, it is kind of a strange premise to do a whole series around this character. I think. Yet at the same time, now there it seems like it's not just going to be about him. It's about the whole kind of the time period, the whole rising of the rebellion. It's Mon Mothma. It's you know. We've seen like ISB officers, and we're going to get peaks of the Empire side. So it's it, it does sound like this has the potential to be something much greater than just the Cassian Andor story. And I, I almost think it's strange to call it this. Like we've talked about this before, like the Dark Times, or you know, s- some other name for it. I think would even be a better idea, just for kind of the casual or non, you know, fan who is like, what is this? Who's Cassian? What what is this supposed to be about? You know, maybe they remember him from Rogue One. Maybe they don't. So. I don't know. I'm I'm excited for it, certainly. It was mentioned a few times that Andor is about regular people in the Star Wars galaxy. We'll presumably learn how these regular people deal with the expanding empire and how that leads them to revolution. Gilroy said, Above everything, this is a show about regular people. You know, we've got this galaxy, and so far we've seen the same people over and over. This is about these huge titanic forces manipulating people's lives. The story of revolution is very complicated. Luna said, It's about what we as a community can do and what are capable of if we understand that our strength is in our numbers. Luna goes on to say, You can't leave out the gray areas in a story about rebellion. He adds, It's quite unfair to call the show and or because it's about a community, an ensemble. Yeah, I... It's the it's the, 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 okay. the Disney's weird choices. Us honestly, the book of Boba Fett wasn't solely about Boba Fett. The Obi Wan Kenobi show wasn't solely about Obi Wan. They just have trouble with names. They just, I, they put a character name because they think that's the big draw. Yes, and it would have been more interesting. We were going to call it, you know, Star Wars Rebellion: The Dark Times. I, I think they feel like that's what Mar- why Marvel works so well. Is you know these character names that the character name always brings people to mm-hmm. the the show or the movie. So they're trying to kind of copy the MCU to a, to an extent. but Like they did with John Carter. Well, that was... <laughs> they dropped the Of Mars. Well, that was just a mistake on many different levels. But, no, I mean, I, I think that's one of their problems. They they just title shows always or after. I mean, the Ahsoka is coming, you know. We have, I, I guess, 
other shows that aren't so much. Like, the accolade is kind of not titled after a character, but is at the same time. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they have this weird... I, I really think they should have changed the name of the show, honestly. Something more Star Wars. And no offense to Diego Luna's character, no offense to Cassian, but I, I don't think that carries the weight of the book of Boba Fett. Yeah, you can say we didn't need it named after Boba Fett. We could have called it something else, or Obi-Wan. We could have come up with something more clever than I think Boba Fett, we Kenobi. decided it was the Tales of Tatooine. Yeah, Tales of... Sure, why not? The, 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 and this is Rebellion Rising, the Dark Times. Something, yeah. I mean, Obi-Wan, just calling it Obi-Wan Kenobi was such a strange thing, because it's like, well, I mean, his life is a very... It's a very long life, so why didn't you call it, you know, the Lost Years? Or, I, I don't know. Get creative. It's like they can't get creative with these titles to save their lives. And yet, when you look at, like, what Lucas called them, like, the Phantom Menace has a very, like, weird kind of creative title. Attack on... Attack of the Clones is kind of a strange, generic one. But, you know, there's always something interesting to the titles. You always name them something. And it's like, since Lucasfilm has fallen under Disney's uh, control, it's like, we'll just call it Obi-Wan. Those who have been looking for a darker and morally gray Star Wars stories will be pleased to hear that uh, Diego was talking about the series acknowledging the gray areas in a story of rebellion. Fans of Rogue One will similarly be pleased to hear that Andor will be visceral and a gritty story just like the film Cassian debuted in. Disney Lucasfilm describes prequel series Andor as a real, visceral, and gritty take on a Star Wars saga while still delivering what the franchise's fans are accustomed to. Indeed, it seems like the events of Andor will make us see Cassian in a new light. Gilroy says that once the show is over, our introduction to Cassian in Rogue One will feel even sadder when we see him callously kill the rebel informant. He said... If we're successful in the 24 total episodes of Andor, when we catch up with Cassian and Rogue One, each scene will have deeper significance. Killing that guy will be sadder. The story of the revolution and what it really means is very complicated, very interesting to delve into as a writer. What's great about building this series is so many scenes in Rogue One will take on a more meaningful significance. Well, yeah, they better, right? I mean, 24 <laughs> episodes, better. right? You do 24 episodes about a character and a build-up to a movie, you better add something to that movie mm -hmm. you better add some more impact or more context certainly so i mean i'm not trying to criticize what he's saying I, I get what he's saying he's trying to hype the movie but yeah obviously this better after two seasons and all of this time we better get more meaning out of rogue one i suppose or context i just like least. that it means that they're really hopefully really thinking about how it fits in with rogue one yeah, I mean, it was such an interesting way. I'll never forget the way Rogue once, you know, Cassian shooting his informant in the back. Like, wow, that's, I mean, that just takes you off guard right away because <laughs> right. we've never, the rebels are always just, they're just the good guys, right? Mm -hmm. They just, where well, they're fighting, and they are the good guys. Let's, you know, let's call it as it is. They're fighting an evil regime, and certainly they are, but that doesn't mean they're squeaky clean, right? That doesn't mean you can't go too far as the good guys. And, you know, one of the problems is the bad guys don't put, you know, limits or restraints on themselves. They'll do whatever it takes to win, whereas... You know, good guys tend to, you know, restrain, not just do any means necessary, yet we see Cassian doing any means necessary. So, interesting stuff. Right. It's been reported that Andor is a spy show, and Gilroy talks about how the ISB factor into the element of the series. It seems that Denise goes Deidre Miro will be our point of view into that part of the Empire. Gilroy says Andor has a very large spy element, noting ISB involvement, while it's a dark area, he does add, it's also people working together with different viewpoints, and Deidre Miro is our main look into that viewpoint part of the show. He also goes on to address K2SO's absence in Andor, at least <laughs> absence in Season 1. So why isn't K2SO in Andor? Gilroy says, wait and see. Ultimately, it's a story we have to and are eager to tell. He says it's very difficult to carry an Imperial droid and not draw attention says when they do it, it will be in a spectacular way. Gilroy adds that the casting we met in Andor Season 1 is very far off from a guy who would think to or know how to repogue an Imperial droid. So K2 will come eventually. The danger is the contradiction it's going to have to the comic book. They did have a story where K2 and Cassian first met. Gilroy seems to have been in contact with the Lucasfilm story group, if they still exist. <laughs> but they do something? But he isn't making any promises that the story is going to remain true to the comic. He says, this is very complicated. We are consistently in touch with the Vatican, which is what they call Lucasfilm story group. 
about what we can do. But it sounds like they're going to have creative freedom to do whatever, whatever they, they want. want. Yeah, because it's just a comic book. They're doing the, the yeah. Filoni method. Yeah, the Filoni. <laughs> Everything's canon until I say so. (laughs) As long as it's a a source that can trump the other sources. Yes, and the comic book is low man on the totem pole, as we kind of discussed. We didn't figure out where games fit in. Somebody mentioned it in the comments. I would say games are are kind of even on par with the like animated shows. I would put them in sort of the same bracket. I think games are pretty important. They're pretty. You get a lot of people playing these games. I mean, usually millions Mm -hmm. and millions of people are playing the games and. They become very beloved. I don't think you really want it's to mess with them It's hard to think about so games much. when they don't put any out. I mean, we, well, it's true. Yeah, I mean, they've, we, we haven't really, really have like, had many since Disney took over. We had the Battlefront, and then yeah, we've had like Fallen one Order. story game. So it's really hard to yeah. Battlefront had a little bit of a story too. But oh yeah, Battlefront, Battlefront two, 2 did have a story, I suppose. With, uh, yeah. Eden, Iden. Yeah, Iden Verso. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, and they had a book connected to that. So, but I would put I would put games certainly above comics and books. And maybe a step below, just a, mm-hmm. a hair below something like an animated show. Well, recently they did talk about how Andor is the first series that's not really using the volume, which did raise questions as to why. So Gilroy stated he's not opposed to using the volume, but he felt that the, through the story that they were telling lended itself to shooting in real-life locations. I wonder if Disney or Lucasfilm got mad that he was like, I didn't use the volume, and everyone's like, praise, praise. Yeah, I wonder how they feel Thank about that. Thank you for not using the volume. We love that you're using practical. And they're like, ah, you're going to knock our new toy, huh? Yeah, I mean, that, that's that got to be a little, I don't know about alarming, but it certainly has to raise some eyebrows when they're like, yeah, we're so happy you're not using that brand new amazing technology that you've been touting all this time and telling us how great it is but we secretly fans are like eh, it looks kind of small we can tell right we're all wondering we're like eh, some well and i think some people are really good at using the volume like in the mandalorian i didn't really think it was too small most of the time it was kenobi that it really... was kenobi that hammered in there and you're like it looks yeah. tiny i mean there are times in the mandalorian you can tell this is there I mean, you can obviously tell they're not on an alien world. Something is, you know, something is afoot, right? We, can, we know they're not right. actually going to different planets across the galaxy. But I do think Kenobi, like I said, there were certain points in Kenobi. I'm like, wow, this is, I feel claustrophobic watching this. I, I feel they're on a soundstage, a small soundstage, or they're in a very small set somewhere. Like, Right, right. And I don't know. And this, just watching the trailer, I'm like, wow, this feels like Star Wars. This feels like a big, expansive... This even... Even just other things about the Mandalorian, and, and I don't know what it is. It's just a feeling of the universe itself feels small. We very rarely see, like, expansive, you know, thing. Like, it's usually like we get one Star Destroyer and two TIE Fighters, where, you know, you watch all of them, like, The Empire Strikes Back. And I granted, different time periods. But, you know, you have all these Star Destroyers. you got Super Star Destroyers. There's TIE Fighters flying around. you got all this cool stuff. And in all these shows, it's like, oh, there's, like, one, you know, small Star Destroyer. And, oh, there's... We go to cities very rarely and i don't know it just makes everything feel much smaller in my opinion i don't know if i can even articulate it maybe others feel the same or are like what in the hell are you talking about thor he's usually confused it's okay yeah all right well that's all we got for you this time so take to the comments below and tell us what you think about any and all of today's news and i think we'll be reviewing the star wars summer vacation i don't even remember the lego summer lego vacation star wars summer vacation that's what it's called yeah i think we'll be reviewing that tomorrow maybe possibly as long as we have time to watch it today yeah some of us are really looking forward to watching the sandman and no we don't get to binge the whole thing you'd rather so, watch sandman over the holiday vacation i'm very movie. interested in the sandman it's, yeah, it's in my wheelhouse i know i'm kidding but anyway take to the comments below tell us what you think of any and all of today's news Let's talk some Star Wars, and until next time, thanks for watching.